Hey folks, how's it going? I don't know how many of you were able to sit and watch the uh, State of the Union. Um, there's probably a lot of you who didn't. And to be honest, I don't blame you one bit for that because it was a crap show to say the least. Uh, I sat through it just because I, you know, I wanted to see what was said. And to be honest, my expectations were not disappointed. Uh, the State of the Union is supposed to be a speech about the current state of the United States, the problems we're facing, and what is supposed to be done about it to try to fix these problems, these issues. It turned out to be nothing more than uh, a campaign speech, basically. Uh, Biden is doing so poorly in the polls uh, and in American sentiment, he, he's so far behind that it, it's ridiculous. Even his own uh, voter base is, is turning against him. And uh, so this was, was nothing more than a campaign speech to try to uh, electrify or invigorate his, his voter base and solidify the voter base in preparation for uh, the election that's coming. Just about everything that was said was either a lie or a projection or uh, gibberish, to be honest with you. Um, and I'm not gonna get into the, the details of all the little things that he said and try to uh, fact check everything he did. He said, um, I'm just not gonna waste that kind of energy and effort right now. But my big takeaway from this is that um, the left is, is moving further left than ever before. Uh, there's actually no middle ground anymore uh, in, in our government. It's, you're either on the right or you're on the extreme left. Some people would say extreme right or extreme left. You know, I'm, I'm not going to argue that either. Uh, because as one, one side becomes more polarized and extreme, obviously it's going to create resistance and, and polarization to the opposite end of the spectrum. So, I mean, that's not to be, I mean, that's to be expected. So that's not a surprise there. Um, in the end, it's, it showed me that the division in this country has not gotten any, any smaller, but actually grown wider. Uh, and anybody who sat through the, the state of the union, one thing that I'll point out is how the, uh, the Democrats, the left, every few words that Biden said, everybody jumped up and started clapping. Uh, it, it was like being at a sporting event almost. Every, everybody would jump up and start clapping. They would sit down, wait a few seconds for him to uh, say a dozen more words, and then they would jump up and start clapping again. And the entire left side would break out in these chants, four more years, four more years, four more years. Four more years of what? High taxes, high inflation, unemployment going up, businesses uh, laying off, and some of the things that he called for in this speech, he was calling for as much as 25% tax on corporations. Um, I, I'm an anti-tax guy, uh, guy to begin with, so I believe taxation uh, is theft, particularly now because we really, much like during the revolution or prior to the revolution, we're being taxed with no real recourse on it. I mean, our taxes go up and up and up. We're taxed at every level. We're double, triple, and quadruple taxed on money. Money we earn, money we spend. Uh, and then we have to, to pay further taxes on that. We have to pay taxes on things that we already own, not just things that we buy. We have to pay taxes when we die. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I'm very much an anti-tax guy. Um, 
but Biden was talking about how creating more jobs, but also in the, on the flip side, taxing corporations as much as 25%. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, anybody that knows anything about business knows that money goes where it's treated well. Um, if you make it advantageous for a company to do business in your country, your state, your city, what have you, that's where they're going to do business. The minute you start making it uh, expensive, I should say, uh, to do business, and trust me, a 25% tax is extremely expensive, particularly at the level of a corporation, they're going to quickly look at where it's going to be cheaper to do that job. So by jumping taxes up to 25% on corporations, what you're effectively doing is telling these people, look, you can do business here at this cost, and then they're gonna look around the world and see where they're gonna be able to ship these jobs and do this work in places where it's going to be cheaper. It's going to cost less. So these jobs are going to get shipped overseas. And now the Federal Reserve has made it clear that they're not going to start cutting rates until employment climbs up and employment drops significantly because they need to slow the, uh, the flow of money in our economy right now because it's flowing too hot. Well, they're getting what they want. Right now, um, companies are laying off. Uh, unemployment is, is right around where they want it, but I'm going to tell you that they actually want more. Anytime they say they want a certain thing, you can understand that that they they want it at a higher level than what they're telling you. Um, they're always going to kind of downplay everything so that they get what they want. They're going to feed you misinformation so that you uh, they have to play it as if we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. Meanwhile, people are hurting. People are suffering. People are losing jobs. People are actually having to go out and getting a second and third jobs just to make ends meet. Uh, that's why uh, the employment numbers look so great is you've got people going out and getting second and third jobs and you've got companies that are, some are laying off, but these people are, are turning around and going out and finding another job. But you've also got companies cutting hours, which doesn't reflect in the unemployment rate. So people are struggling, but the numbers that the government is putting out look good. Uh, but this is what they want, and they want more of it. They want four more years of it, and eight more years of it, and 12 more years of it. And this is not going to end anytime soon. Uh, they want to bring more people in. He's... He's trying to blame Republicans for not securing the border this entire time uh, as if he had nothing to do with it, which is just absurd. Uh, he's putting down Republicans for not supporting his so-called bipartisan uh, border act. But if you, if you took the time to read that act, you would understand that what it would actually do is permanently open the border in a sense and it would make it near impossible to uh, issue any kind of legal challenge to it because it would restrict any court cases to one specific court in the entire United States. It could only be challenged in D.C. and it could only be uh, held in D.C. Uh, the numbers of migrants being capped to shut down the border, which is one thing that they touted, uh, was over a period of a week or two. And those numbers would only be uh, relevant or be calculated from immigrants from Canada or Mexico. So if you came from uh, over the border illegally from Venezuela or anywhere in South America, to be honest with you, or from Africa over to South America, then up through Mexico or through China, up through Mexico, those numbers would not count towards uh, the cap. Man, that's a loud play. Uh, those numbers would not apply towards any cap for freezing the border crossings. The only numbers that would count, the only countries of origin that would count are Mexico and Canada. And that right there tells you it, it would not 
do a thing to stem this flow of illegal immigration. So what this tells me is that, again, the division in this country is, is as wide as it ever has been and growing wider. Um, the Biden administration and the, the left in general are moving further left. And as a direct result of that, the right are going to solidify their position for the right. People in the middle are going to get caught in the middle uh, and they're going to have to choose a side at some point because they have no choice or they're going to have to avoid voting. Uh, which honestly, I, I can't blame you if you do that. Uh, you know, everybody has to make that choice for themselves, but the division is continuing to grow and it's going to pick up pace. You're not going to find any answers from the government. You're not going to be able to elect anybody that is going to solve this problem. For all those people that believe Trump is the answer, Trump is the savior, and he's going to fix everything when he gets in, no, he's not. Um, you could have the uh, a very honorable person get elected with the best intentions behind him or her, and they still would not be able to stop what's happening because with Trump, this is going to be a second term. And he's not, he, as much as the left fought against him and stood in his way on doing anything during his first term, it's going to be more of an issue in his second term. Uh, once he gets in there, anything he tries to pass, they're just gonna shoot it down. They're gonna block it. They're gonna fight over it. It's gonna get stalled in Congress. Uh, the House might support him, but when it gets to the Senate, it's going to stall there, and it's not going to go anywhere. So this is this is going to be nothing more than a, a lame duck session, to be honest with you. He might be able to slow the progress down a little bit with some executive orders if he gets in. Uh, but it's not going to stop what's coming. And add to that, if he does get elected... They've already tried to remove him from several ballots in states. And the Supreme Court unanimously shot that down because he's ne he's not been uh, convicted or char even charged with insurrection, but they're trying to use that against him. Uh, regardless of where you stand on that issue, he hasn't been charged or convicted of insurrection. And an indictment by itself is not a conviction. Uh, so they're uh, illegally trying to remove him from the ballot to remove any kind of choice from the Republicans and from the conservatives. It, it, it's, it's a cluster, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, this is... It's chaos, and it's going to get worse. If he gets elected, you're going to see chaos, outrage, and violence from the left like never before. Assuming he can even get elected, which you're going to see a lot of questionable things happen during the election. Uh, much like in 2020, probably even more extreme since they've openly tried to remove him from the ballot. So don't be surprised if there's a lot of very obvious things happen uh, to raise red flags and questions. And if that happens, you can expect some outrage from the right in response to that. Uh, if Biden gets reelected, God forbid, um, you've got four more years of <laughs> what I can only call uh, the dismantling of the United States. Uh, where this country is being dismantled by our government, by our very own government. They want to tear everything completely down so they can rebuild it in the image that they want. Uh, and trust me, it's, that image would not be good for anybody. So you can vote in this election. Uh, I'm not gonna discourage you. I'm not gonna be one of those people that sell you, uh, your vote doesn't matter. Uh, regardless of any kind of partisan politics or uh, gerrymandering or election interference or influence or whatever you, 
I'm not going to be one of those type of people. If you believe you're, you need to vote, then vote. If you believe there's no point in voting, trust me, I can, I can understand that. I can sympathize. Uh, that's a decision each American has to make for themselves. I'm not going to get into that. What I will say is that no matter what the outcome of the election, again, Biden gets in there, this train wreck is going to continue and it's going to pick up speed. Uh, if Trump gets in there, he might be able to slow down a few things, but you're going to see violence and chaos uh, and protests like you will, will not believe. So we need to prep accordingly. That, the only thing we can do proactively is to prep accordingly. That means your food, your medicine, your defensive items. Uh, make sure you have uh, a secure place to live. Secure your home uh, because when violence starts roaming down the streets, when mobs start uh, patrolling the streets and trying to break into people's homes, you need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for the fact that law enforcement may or may not be able to uh, show up to assist you. Uh, be prepared to feed yourself for six months to a year or more. Be able to uh, provide your own defense, your own uh, medical care. You need to be able to provide your own water should your water get cut off or disrupted somehow. Uh, you need to be able to provide your own energy to some degree. Uh, make sure that all this food that you have stocked up, you can you have ways of cooking it. Multiple ways of cooking it. Um, don't be like that meme going around on Facebook where this couple is in the bunker while bombs are going off overhead, and the man forgot to pack his can opener in with his supplies. You know, don't don't be like that. Cover your bases. Uh, and I will say that with the vi potential violence that could come from a Trump re-election and the continued lawlessness uh, that will no doubt happen with a Biden re-election, you need to be prepared to shelter in place, defend your home, secure your home, but you also need to be able to uh, relocate to a more secure area. Bug out, as they say. Don't expect to be able to bug out to the woods and be able to survive out in the wilderness, out in the mountains, out in the state parks. Everybody's thinking that. Don't be doing that. If you, if you intend to bug out, you need to make sure that you have a place secured ahead of time. And I'm not talking about state parks or national parks or anything like that. You need to have you a place of your own or a, a close family member or a friend that you are in agreement with that you will go to if it all hits the fan. Make sure you have a secure place to go to in case you have to leave your home because while bug uh, bugging in at your home may be the best choice because that's where all your stuff is, you also have to be prepared for the possibility of needing to bug out because staying put will get you killed. So you need an alternate place to go in case you have to leave because of roaming mobs of uh, violence, uh, because of terrorism, uh, because of fires, uh, what have you, any, any of those things. The future's not looking good for this country, folks. I, I honestly believe that we've reached a point where the division in this country is so great, the few of us that can actually look at things from a a middle ground perspective are so few. And the division, the divide, the gap between us is so great. I, I just don't believe there's any coming back together. It would take a major event, uh, much like World War II, the bombing of Pearl Harbor to bring us back together. And to be fair, I honestly don't think even that would work. Uh, I believe that any major attack on the United States right now would result in, in pure chaos uh, because the division and the hate between the two sides is so strong that uh, the left would be blaming the right for it. 
and the right would be blaming the left for it. There would be suspicion. There would be conspiracy theories. I just, I don't think that we are in a position where anything like that could bring us back together as a country. That I think our division and our uh, differences are just too great at this point. Anyway, I'm rambling on, but that's my takeaway from the uh, state of disunion or whatever you want to call it. It certainly wasn't a state of the union, a campaign speech, but a state of division. <sighs> Things are looking sad for this country, folks. Uh, and I hope you're pre preparing accordingly so that you have the best odds of coming out the other side without suffering too much. And trust me, I think we're all going to suffer to some extent. I don't, I think that's unavoidable, but that's all I've got folks. Just, uh, I, I hate that it's such a, a doom and gloom type video, but it is what it is. <sighs> Stay safe folks. Keep prepping. Don't get complacent. There's too much darkness on our future on the horizon. Storm clouds are, are rolling you folks. It's getting dark and it's not looking good. And for those people that think that it's it's going to be great, it's going to be fine, you're most likely living with your head in the sand, and that's not going to serve you any serve you well at all. So keep prepping, stay safe, and <laughs> just prep as best you can. That's all I can say. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, folks. I'll catch you later.